So in this video, we're going to talk about the capacitative facility location model. This is a uh, network optimization model. Um, and it builds upon the demand allocation model. So as a reminder from the last video, we talked about how to allocate demand given we have fixed uh, facilities. Now we wanna add where should we have those facilities? So which facilities should we open and close? And then once we open facilities, how do we allocate the resources from those facilities to meet demand and to source supplies? So um, more formally, what that says is given a set of supply sources with specified capacities and a set of customers with specified demands, those are given, we need to determine which facility should be open and we need to determine the best allocation of supply from open plants to customers that minimizes cost. So this is very similar to the demand allocation model, except we have uh, an additional decision, which is should I open or should I leave it closed? And if I open, how should I allocate my resources? So let's formulate that optimization model. Again, as a reminder, to formulate an optimization model, we need to define our sets. Those are a collection of things. The decision variables, which are what we get to decide. Um, in this problem, it's which facilities to open, how to allocate demand. Um, input parameters, um, our objective function, which is our goal. In this case, it's minimize cost and constraints. All right, so to get started, the capacity facility location model has the same sets as the demand allocation model. So we have a set of potential facility locations and a set of market or demand points. Our input parameters um, are similar, but we have an additional one. So we have an additional fixed cost, FI, for every um, potential location. And so F of I, there would be one for each uh, blue box. Um, and that is how much does it cost if I decide to open that facility. Um, we continue to have a capacity for each uh, facility. And then we know how many um, potential facilities there are. Um, and other input parameters, the demand. Um, so for each a demand market, J, we have D of J, um, and so this is similar to the demand allocation model, and then we know that there are M of those. And then we also have uh, the same similar CIJ, which is a cost that connects the um, facilities I's with the demand J's. And so it's the cost of either producing or shipping or however in the context of the problem from facility I to market J. Um, so for this, this problem, let's see if you get an understanding of set notation. For this example, so this very specific example where we have three demand markets, we have RPI students, Russell Sage students, and state legislatures, and we have two potential facility locations um, in Albany and Troy. So for this example, how many total pieces of data will you need as inputs for FI? Which as a reminder, FI we just defined as the fixed cost of running facility I. So hopefully um, you selected two. Um, there are two pieces of data. We'd have to have two cells in Excel. Um, we need to know the fixed cost of building in Albany and the fixed cost of building in Troy. So for this um, specific example, the answer is two. Um, the next question says, again, for this specific example, how many total pieces of data will you need as inputs for CIJ, which is the cost of producing and shipping one unit from facility I to market J? So for this example, um, we need uh, I to J. So we have Albany and Troy, and we have three green dots. So we have state legislatures, RPI students, and Russell Sage. So we have a two by three matrix, so we need six pieces of data. So the correct answer is E, six pieces of data. Again, this is very specific for this um, specific example, but my um, hopefully getting you to think about um, what is the influence of changing uh, input uh, collections or sets on input data? All right, so the decision variables in this problem, um, what do we get to decide? So we get to decide which facilities to open as well as then once we um, have opened them, how much quantity sh should be shipped from an open facility to a demand market? So we have two types of decision variables in the capacitated facility location model. I'm going to denote YI as one. If facility I is open, zero otherwise. So that's a binary decision variable. It's one if I decide to open it, um, and it's zero otherwise. That means I don't open that facility. 
And then we also have XIJ, which is the same definition um, from the demand allocation model, which is the quantity shipped from facility I to market J. And that's a continuous um, variable. Um, so then the objective function, um, which again determines how good um, is a solution. So how are we going to decide what a good solution is? Um, and so in this problem, we're minimizing total cost, but we need to incorporate the facility cost, or sometimes called the fixed uh, charge, um, of opening a facility plus the operational cost. And so the objective function has, on the right-hand side, the same objective function that we had in the demand allocation problem. So the CIJ times XIJ is the cost of making these shipping and producing um, aspects. However, we also have what's sometimes called a fixed charge, is if I open a facility, it costs me a fixed amount of um, money to do that. And so remember again, why I is a binary variable. And so it's how much does it cost if I operate this um, facility times, do I operate it yes or no? And so this is the first part of this um, objective function is independent of the quantity shipped out. So it's the fixed cost plus the variable cost um, of our solution. And then we have constraints, which again, limit our decisions. And so we have similar constraints to demand allocation um, that all demand markets must be satisfied. Um, we also say that we only um, have a capacity of Ki, but the key thing here is Ki if it's an open facility. If we decide not to open it, the capacity is zero. We can't be sending anything from it. And so constraint two in words seems very similar to the same as the demand allocation, but in math, is a little bit trickier um, than the demand allocation problem. Um, we also have a, a constraint that says a facility is an all or nothing uh, decision. We can't open 50% of a facility. We either have to open it and we get that capacity KI or we don't open it. It's a zero one um, decision. And then again, we can't ship negative things. So XIJs have to be positive. So if we break that down, what does that look like? So the first equation or constraint looks just like our um, demand allocation model. What are we saying is we have DJ required at each J uh, demand location. So each green uh, circle has a requirement of D of J, and then we can sum over I, so I is our facilities, and we have to have uh, our demand being met. So one is similar um, to the demand allocation model. Two is one I wanna spend a little bit of time on, um, and two enforces that each open facility I only has a capacity Ki. Um, so if you look on the left-hand side of this equation, we're summing up um, across different demand points. And we're saying for a given location, um, all of the things that get shipped out of that location have to be less than or equal to Ki times Yi. And so Ki, remember, is the capacity. The key thing here, and this is a trick, is there's a binary decision variable. So yi is one. If I decide to build, I get all ki of that capacity. But when yi is zero, I don't care how anything times zero is zero, right? So I don't care what ki is. If, if I don't build here, this yi, this side becomes zero, and therefore all of the x's going into, um, going out of i have to be zero as well. And so this is a little bit subtle, uh, much more happening than in the demand allocation model. And then constraint three is just that this is a binary decision variable, why? So you can either build or not, and four says we can only send non-negative shipments. Um, so one thing to note is even though this seems innocent uh, that we have now a binary or an integer variable, um, from a solution methodology perspective, this is a more complicated problem to solve because it is no longer a strict linear program. Instead, it's an integer linear program, which um, are more difficult to solve. Um, and so here's just the problem all put together. Um, again, we have the same sets as the demand allocation model, but we now have two different variables. We have the shipped and whether or not I build. Um, and so we have to capture this fixed cost um, of building or not in our objective function. And we also have to capture the fact that if I don't build, I can't use that facility in this constraint. All right, so my next clicker question for you is, what type of optimization model is the one we just formulated for the capacitated facility location problem? 
So your correct answer should be A. It's an integer um, program, sometimes called an IP for short, integer program. I put linear um, in uh, parentheses because it's technically an integer linear programming model, but oftentimes they'll drop the word linear. It is actually not a linear program, it's not an LP. The reason is, is we have these binary variables. And so if we have binary variables, convexity goes out the window and we're no longer able to use simplex to get an optimal solution. So by adding a binary decision variable to your model, uh, we can model way cooler things. It has a lot of power from a modeling perspective, but it makes our problems harder to solve. And we'll see um, how to solve these problems in another video.